So, may God bless all of you. May God, may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, open the ears that have been blocked. May He open the eyes that have been closed. May He open the understanding in order for everyone to understand His Word and once obeying His Word, following His Word, then you will reach, you will conquer, conquer the Kingdom of Heaven. The Kingdom of God is conquered. You have to take possession of it, the Kingdom of God. It's what Jesus proposes. He said, from the days of John the Baptist, the Kingdom of Heaven suffers violence. The Kingdom of Heaven is taken by force and this violence is not against towards people. This violence it is towards yourself, against yourself. You must violate yourself. You have to violate your heart. You, I, all of us, me as well. I'm speaking to you about this and this applies to me as well. No one is immune. No one is an exception, not at all. The kingdom of heaven doesn't fall from heaven just like that. No, you must take possession of it. However, the nice thing, it's good to talk about this because we started the fast of Daniel today, didn't we? At midnight, this fast of Daniel. The nice thing about what Jesus said, that the kingdom of heaven is taken by force. It's not force against the devil. It's not being forceful against the world or against people. No. It's to be violent against our own hearts. But why, Bishop? Because the human heart is already born, it is born in sin, it is born corrupt, it is born wicked. And I say that because we've seen this. Actually, a friend of mine, a professional, who has been helping me, he said to me, Bishop, it's interesting because my niece is two years young and when she sees her mother breastfeeding her little sister who is newly born, she gets jealous. She gets jealous and she starts beating the mother up because of that. She does not want to share her mother with anybody else. So you see that a child who is two years young, who taught this child to be jealous of her sister? Who? It's the human nature. The human nature is like this. The heart already comes with that DNA of sin, the sin committed by Adam and Eve there in the beginning of humanity. Everyone is born like this. Everyone, there's no exception. Everyone is already born with that seed of rebelliousness. And this rebelliousness is not something that happens consciously. 
it's the heart. It's the ill feeling that we've inherited from our parents. So, when Jesus says that the kingdom of God is taken by force, it's because of that. The heart does not want to submit to God, to the kingdom of God. The heart does not want to submit to the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because the heart thinks, you know what, I, I know what I like, what I want, and I want to do my will. I want to satisfy my desires. I want this, I want that. I don't want God to choose for me a husband or a wife. I don't want God to impose His will on my tastes. That's the reality. So, in order for you to conquer, to conquer the kingdom of heaven, you have to submit your will which are born inside your heart. The heart is the factory of wills and desires and lusts. So, when you submit or you subject your wills to God's will, the heart does not like it. The heart does not want it, so you have to violate it. You have to violate the heart. You have to submit. Either you submit or you will suffer for the rest of your life and for all eternity. There is no way to change this situation if you yourself do not react if you do not violate your will. It's easy, it's, it's simple to, to understand. We, we give these examples, but these are simple things, but very interesting because you know, I know, we all know, we are human beings, we all have our will. But for example, for example, you sit at a table, for example, in my case, when I travel and I stay in, in the house of a pastor, so on, so they usually serve us with the best they have. So sometimes there's so many options available, so delicious, so tasty, so wonderful, a pastor's wife comes and says, Bishop, I baked you this cake. And the other one comes and says, Bishop, so-and-so sent you this, and so on. So the table is abundant, beautiful, attractive. And it immediately makes my mouth watery. Hmm? However, I have my limitations. I I personally, I have my limitations when it comes to food. I have certain restrictions. So there are certain types of food that I cannot eat. Because if I do, I will feel unwell. If I eat it, it will cause me a problem. And even if I can eat the ones that I can eat and I like to eat, I still have to eat them in a way that I will not eat more than what I can. But our heart is there, you know, and who, who speaks to our hearts? It's our eyes. Our eyes sends information to the heart. Oh, look at this, how delicious. And we really want to eat this and that and etc., etc., etc. You know what I mean. You understand what I'm saying. That's the truth. You who is always on a diet to lose weight, you don't want to gain weight, and you have to be watching yourself all the times. This means that you and I, all of us, violate our heart, our will, our desires. 
the desire was to eat more, but no, I can't, it's not possible. So you have to have this self-control. And if the person doesn't have self-control, they will gain weight, they will feel bad, and so on. There will be consequences that won't be good for them. So you have to violate yourself, to violate your heart, which is this factory of wills, of desires, of lusts, etc., etc., etc. So many times the Bible speaks about the flesh. The flesh conflicts against the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit conflicts against the flesh, and the flesh there is the heart. It's, it's the heart that desires and wants. Therefore, dear friends, it's a war. For example, we started the fast of Daniel today. So, naturally, we are going to have to violate our heart to not search for information, for secular news, for news of what's happening in Israel, what's happening there in Ukraine, information about what is happening in Africa, the wars there in Africa that no one really talks about, but there is more losses and deaths in, in Africa than Ukraine and Israel, but no one talks about, right? It's just Africa. The media is not really interested about Africa, unfortunately. That's the reality. But it's a fact. It's a reality. You start to then limiting yourself. You want to know what's happening, what's going on, but you stop and deny, to deny your will, to deny your heart, you have to be limited to the meditation of the Word of God, the prayer, to think of the things of God. So all of this makes you violate your heart, violate your will, violate yourself in order to conquer the kingdom of heaven. Dear friends, it's good for you to know this because then you know who your greatest enemy is in order for you to keep a close eye on it, for you to watch it, for you to watch it 24 hours a day. However, it's worth it because you will be violating your will not to conquer the kingdom of this world, the kingdom of sin, but to conquer the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, which is the prize of those who overcome, who will overcome. Jesus said that. He who overcomes, to the overcomer, I will give this and that and the other. And you have to overcome yourself, yourself, so that you may inherit the kingdom of heaven. Now, I would like you to take advantage of this fast of Daniel and, and take this advice, this advice which I personally have been following. Because in the moment which you are alone, when you are alone, there's no one next to you. And you look for something to do Oh, well, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do? You are alone. You have no obligation to fulfill. And then you look around and ask, what am I going to do? 
And the first thing you think is to go online and travel, right? Online, as we do usually when we are not in the fast of Daniel. So I'll go read the news. I, I want to know what's happening there on the other side of the world and so on. We know that the universal churches of the kingdom of God are open in countries where there is war and there is risk for one's life. So we want to know what's happening there. So what am I going to do? What should I do? What have I been doing? And there is the advice to those who, who think, did you know that when we are in the church, we are hearing the word of God, we are praising, we are worshipping, we are active when we are with our family, we are there with family talking, etc., etc. But when we are alone, what do we do? And this is a situation that is very peculiar to each of us. I usually close my eyes and talk to God in my heart. In my thoughts, I, I mean, I thank God for what He has done in my life and through my life. I ask God for direction. Oh, my Father, help me, teach me to give to your people what they need, not what they want, but what they need. Teach me to give to your people. Not only to me, but to all of your servants all over the world, in all the churches. Teach me to serve you. Give us the direction that we should pass on to your people. Because we are your servants. We are your priests. And we have to fulfill an obligation towards those that have been coming to us. So in these moments of solitude, it's good, it's very good for you to talk to God, for you to think of God. Perhaps you don't even want to speak out loud, but in your mind you are in spirit of prayer, which means that as long as you are active, spiritually speaking, as long as you are acting your faith, then you are walking in the presence of God. You, are, you can be certain that you are in the presence of God because all the times that we think of God, we think of God, we pray, we attract Him to us. Even though when a person has the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is in them. However, having Him inside or not, when we talk to God, we attract His attention because He wants to hear our gratitude, our praise from from our hearts. He saved us in order for us to glorify and magnify, sanctify His name here on earth so that many other people can be saved and do His will with their life as well. So in these moments that you are alone, take advantage of them. Take advantage of them to communicate with Him, to speak to Him, wherever you are. Elevate your thoughts to Him and you will be taking your heart before the Most High because that's what He wants. You know, that father, that mother who longs to see 
their children together with them. Do you remember that Jesus said when he spoke to to the people of Israel, to the priests, with people in general in, in Jerusalem, he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I wanted to gather your children together, to gather you as a hen gathers her cheeks under her wings. Have you read that before? Well, this is how I wanted to have you close to me, under my wings. Have you seen an image like this, a video? Of course, if you grew up in a farm, for sure you've seen these simple things, very insignificant sometimes, but so powerful. The hand gathering her cheeks under her wings and walking with them next to her, looking after them. Oh, dear friends, the Lord Jesus identified himself with this idea, with a hen having her cheeks next to her, under her wings. And that's what God wants to do. He wants us to be under his wings, protected protected, kept, safe, with security, with food, with everything. How nice, isn't it? How God shows us with the simple things of life, how he has been taking care of his children. So take advantage of this moment when you are not just in these days of the fast of Daniel, but any day in 21 days from now when the fast is over, cultivate this intimate relationship with him and you will see you will see that you will you will experience a honeymoon with God. I have been doing this and how wonderful this is. How good this is. Because when you are alone, you have freedom to talk to God loud and clear or even silently. You can concentrate your thoughts with Him. Isn't it true? But if there's someone next to you, then by default, you have to give attention to, to the person who is next to you. So sometimes the person speaks about subjects and topics that don't match with what you are thinking. So it's difficult for you to enter God's presence with someone else next to you, unless that person is also thinking as you do about the things of God. So take advantage of these moments and think. Think about this. Jesus... I will, I will get the text here that speaks about Jesus and he is talking about the children of Israel, the people of God. How wonderful this is. God is too great. He's glorious. Jesus said like this, Oh, Jerusalem, 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 who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen, as a hen gathers her cheeks under her wings but you were not willing. Luke speaks about this as well as Matthew. Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. 
How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you are not willing. Did you know God wants to have communion with you? God wants to share with you His glory. Isn't it what the text says, the, the prophecy says, that the glory of the latter house, what is the latter house? Who is the latter temple? The latter temple, the latter houses, are those who have received the Holy Spirit, or those who receive the Holy Spirit, or if you receive the Holy Spirit, you become the latter temple. So the glory of the latter temple shall be greater than the former, the former temple. The glory of the former temple was when the Holy Spirit descended upon the temple of Solomon, the temple Solomon built for God. The glory of God descended. Imagine the glory of God descending upon you. The Holy Spirit descending upon you. So you will feel like a chick under the wings of the mother. Imagine how your life will be different. Then yes, you will be in spirit and in truth, in conditions to glorify and exalt and honor God with your lips, okay? So, praise God. Let's go in this faith, in this fast of Daniel from today. May God bless you all, and I see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God.